Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome for joining Dr. Momo Macau Heritage Assessment Task Force of the fifth Dr. Momo Macau Seminar. One of the objectives of our association is to document the relevant buildings of modern movement in Macau and to make necessary assessment for their protection and intervention that may arise. In recent years, we have prepared a few assessment reports, including our first assessment report for Helen Lin Orphanage in 2015, and the report for the protection of Rina Donna Leonard Housing Block in 2018. And this year, a report on the urban integration of the expansion of the Portuguese School of Macau has been submitted to the governments and all stakeholders. And now I would like to pass the mic to my colleague to make a brief presentation on the last two reports. Thank you, Nicole. Um, uh, good uh, afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here and uh, uh, Thanks for uh, coming for our session. Um, especially, uh, I think this year we organize it in a particular way uh, because we try to make a compact program, but not with, uh, with, with some variety. So we're very excited to have the second uh, part of this with the session and two presentations by Professor uh, Sheridan Burke and Professor In Sorry, Fimon. And uh, now our this uh, first session, my name and uh, Nicole is more about uh, our uh, the real purpose of our association and what we do, uh, not in the public, but uh, uh, when we have uh, uh, to deal with the kind of uh, this kind of uh, situa urgent situations. So um, the, the 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 work uh, is. At the base, uh, the assessment work that we do is the core of our uh, uh, work at Tokumomo. And uh, uh, it starts with the uh, uh, production of uh, minimum fish. Uh, uh, Tokumomo minimum fish uh, is a, 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 a report on the building. Uh, it's, it's done uh, based on a selection of the buildings that we think are more uh, significant in a, a, a modernist movement in Macau. So at the moment, we have uh, 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 40 buildings that have uh, uh, this uh, preliminary uh, minimum fish and uh, uh, that we keep on uh, developing. And of course, then we go into more detail when we have uh, uh, buildings that are at risk. So the, the Rio de Leonor uh, uh, housing block um, was uh, uh, something that we had to, to, to raise an alert in 2018 uh, following uh, issuance of, uh, of um, a PCU that allowed the total de demolition of the block. And uh, so um, what uh, we, uh, apart from this, uh, an initial uh, petition that was done uh, with some uh, in collaboration with other uh, entities, and which is still ongoing. It has, at the moment, I suppose, almost 2,000 uh, signatures. Um, we did the, uh, this uh, uh, evaluation that was submitted to, to, to the IC, into the Macau government. Um, uh, our uh, uh, proposal, uh, our request was for the uh, classification of the building. And so uh, we focused on different aspects uh, that uh, uh, the building uh, uh, represented. So first, uh, the first one was about the urban context where it is, which is uh, one of the, the richest uh, modernist urban context uh, in Macau because this is a, it's all built on a reclamation from, uh, from the, uh, the 50s. And uh, second, uh, the relationship uh, between the, the interior and, the, and the, the public dimension of the building. Uh, thirdly, the technical innovation of the building. And, um, um, and then uh, lastly, 
the, 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 the symbolic relevance of the building, not only its relationship to a, a certain brutalist modernism and the, the work of Corbusier at that time, uh, but also uh, we thought very significant was the, um, the fact that the architect, José Ley, uh, was uh, uh, not only a, a local uh, uh, architect, um, but a locally bred uh, architect, a, a person who had uh, his formative years in Macau, started working in his father's practice, Antonio Ley, uh, who was a public servant in the Public Works Department, and then move on to Hong Kong to, to study more and to open up his private practice. So this was very relevant because uh, from our point of view, to have such an important international style building uh, uh, designed in such a, a, an elegant, sleek and, and, and rigorous manner by a man who was basically locally bred, uh, represented a, a very important achievement for Macau uh, as a cosmopolitan city, as a place, an international place, where there was only there was also some kind of local sense of uh, understanding the the present and thinking about uh, uh, architecture and the future, and not as a place where uh, people from uh, uh, let's say uh, from from Portugal or from Europe uh, would come here uh, or from Hong Kong even and bring the last trends. So this is very significant because if you look at the building from this perspective, uh, it is really uh, uh, interesting to see how fresh and, 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 and rigorous the building is. So um, uh, we then, um, for this report, uh, uh, went into uh, to research uh, uh, more on the background of the author. Uh, to, to understand the background of the author is very important because um, the, the, it's not a classification of a building is not about the, just the object itself. It's not only about the cortex itself uh, and it's not only about the technological innovation. Uh, it, is, it is also an issue of understanding the significance of the author his contribution as a whole, uh, and also uh, understanding how uh, um, uh, this work was uh, um, at the time recognized. So uh, this was uh, 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 quite uh, um, particular, the case of Roselle and the uh, RDL block, because uh, a lot of most of the historians or architecture historians who had come and written and documented until 1999 were Portuguese. There were not many traces of José in Macau because he had moved to Hong Kong and his practice was in Hong Kong. And there were no not published works on him in Macau. So uh, that was something like a very big gap. Uh, and the questions that we encountered when uh, preparing this report were exactly, you know, where is the evidence? So uh, with the help of uh, um, some uh, colleagues from Hong Kong and Hong Kong Dokumomo and uh, of our uh, good friend, José Benaires, we managed to track José Lei, who is, who is uh, uh, very old, but still uh, was still at this time, was still alive. And uh, we managed to find the family and, uh, and also uh, several articles that had been published. And uh, it is quite interesting that uh, uh, his, uh, his practice uh, over the years after uh, this, uh, this block um, uh, was, was so significant. Uh, he's the architect of the Hong Kong Cultural Center and of the, 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 the uh, observatorium in Hong Kong. And so all of this is not only designed, but it's also planned by him. He was also the first head of the architectural service department uh, in Hong Kong government. So he was a very distinguished uh, professional in the 70s and the 80s in Hong Kong. So I would like to, to now um, uh, just go through the five points uh, uh, that our um, the request for classification uh, uh, went into and made the argument. These five points are the five uh, uh, 
uh, arguments, the five criteria that the heritage law uh, um, defines for classification of a building. So uh, basically what this means in Article 18 is that there are five uh, criteria through which a building uh, can be an, uh, considered for classification. Um, from what we understand, uh, it is uh, advisable that the building comply at least with two of these criteria. So we made the argument for all of the five criteria uh, uh, of this point. And this for us is very important. And when we do make this uh, uh, report or this request, uh, it is not meant to, to receive an approval. Uh, from our point of view, most important is to create an exercise with the government and with uh, um, the IC uh, to, uh, uh, to put the, the law in practice. So that is the reason, it's kind of the dialogue that should happen and, and develop this kind of uh, uh, rationale of understanding why we have to classify this building and not to go and choose which buildings to classify because uh, we know it's safe, because we know the owner, because the owner is willing to, to sell. So that is not the whole purpose of the law. That is not the whole purpose of understanding heritage protection and so on classification of buildings. So uh, now very quickly, the first, uh, uh, the, the, the title is the, the definition of the heritage law of 2015. So it's the importance of the building as a noteworthy lived experience and embodiment of history. And uh, so uh, this is in the case of uh, RDL housing law. It's, it's very true because it, it, it represents this first moment of, uh, of, um, of a building in height. And the, 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 this is part of a group of work by local and, 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 and Portuguese architects uh, to, 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 to change this to, into this new technology, technology into this new method, method of designing with new materials, with new technology, and with a new sense of space. So uh, the, the second criteria is the intrinsic aesthetic uh, and the technical material value of the building. Here also, it's a radical uh, shift uh, from uh, what was being done before. There was a lot of modernist uh, structures uh, already in place, but uh, in Macau, but uh, the RDL housing block is a clear uh, clean sheet in terms of doing a, a concrete high rise, uh, applying technology of uh, using lifts and vertical systems in a large scale and so on. Third, the third criteria is the architectural concept of the structure is urban integration. Here, uh, the, the, it, it is a, 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 the, the downtown of Macau, this reclamation. It's a wonderful uh, collection of modern buildings because they were all built at the same time. And uh, uh, the modernism arrived quite late in Macau, so by the time these new urban plots were ready for development. A lot of modern structures came on, and uh, also uh, the not only the buildings but the, the the urbanism itself is a very modern uh, grid that is uh, uh, imp superimposed on the curve of the the old uh, Praia Grande Bay. And uh, uh, the fourth criteria is the interest of the building as a symbolic testimony, uh, and here the this. Uh, um, iconic uh, change in the skyline of Macau. You can see that beautiful uh, vertical slab of the RDL block at the time when there was uh, uh, not so much construction in, in, in the Praia Grande and how it completely changed the configuration of, of the city and, and how elegant it was. You know, if you look at it now, it's apparently not this elegant because it's totally surrounded by uh, the structure is what not well maintained so um but it, it is exactly what uh, it was at the, at the time and uh, and i thought it was interesting to to really come across the face of roselle in an interview that he did for hkia uh, in the 90s and uh, again here the symbolic testimony is uh, this uh, uh, relation between 
uh, the dimension, international dimension of the work and uh, the, the local uh, uh, author who uh, uh, goes out and understands uh, the, the world as it happens. So uh, the fifth criteria is the social scientific importance of the building as a source of knowledge. And from our point of view, this is clearly uh, uh, present in RDL block because it's, it's a first in so many ways. The first use of a leaf, the first use of, of uh, uh, the designing a, a vertical facade in, 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 in a ventilated building and so on. So it, it is still working, it still works well. Uh, it, it was at the time when we didn't have air conditions and, 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 and all this kind of uh, passive energy was an important um, uh, it was a central element of uh, design for, for architects of two generation. Um, so, so then, uh, the, at the time we submitted, there was a second request of classification by the Tomo International, who uh, supported us with this letter uh, and uh, uh, made a request to, uh, to have the building classified and uh, the, the giving the arguments uh, again of the, the innovation that the building represented to Macau and uh, how it could, uh, uh, how it had to be, uh, 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 had the awareness that had to be created to, uh, 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 to make uh, the whole process somehow uh, come into real realization as being uh, such a, a new structure. Also, uh, the, 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 the report from the Dokomomo International uh, saying that it is urgent to raise the awareness of, of the qualities and significance of this building to the local authorities and it stands as an exemplary testimony to the advent of modernism in 20th century history and innovation. We should, should be preserved for future generations, Co considering the technology and the, the um, and the design innovation. Uh, thirdly, uh, we received uh, uh, after rough, uh, uh, around uh, uh, nine months, uh, uh, having shared our report with the ECOMOS. By the time we submitted to the government. Uh, ECOMOS, uh, uh, International Scientific Committee of the 20th Century, uh, got very interested in the case of this building and, uh, and our efforts to raise the awareness and protect it. So they also submitted their uh, a request for classification of the building. And their letter was, uh, their request was of in September 2019. So. I just like to read a couple of uh, paragraphs from the ECOMOS report. It says that in the pursuit of sustainable development, communities have much to gain from adaptive reusing buildings, such as environmental benefits combined with energy savings and social advantages of recycling valued heritage. This makes adaptive reuse an essential component of sustainable development, crucial for a more than densely populated city such as Macau. The repurposing of buildings can be provided by the community with new commercial property opportunities and shed a new light and interest on a building that society might not perceive as well used in such a premium area of the city. So uh, the, the, what I wanted to refer about uh, the, 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 the report and the, the dialogue that was uh, created uh, with ECOMOS uh, ISC 20C uh, during their elaboration of the, their uh, report uh, was that for us it was like a test because they could only submit put in this report either if they really felt confident that at an international level and not at the local level uh, and with the criteria that ECOMOS uses for making this kind of assessments for UNESCO and for other government other governments that that all the, the that this building complied with the standards that, that they should expect uh, for such, and so uh, we we were working constantly to give it the support and doing the research, so doing the background and um, the understanding the, the the story and the 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 significance of the author and the building 
and the, the whole of his work. So uh, we, we did a lot of that to support uh, uh, ECOMOS. Uh, it's not reflected in the report here, but this report was only, uh, let's say, handed into Macau government once all of those benchmarks were seen as uh, 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 achieved by ECOMOS with our local support. So um, if uh, anyone is interested in having, knowing more about uh, José Lai, we have printed some copies of his uh, short, uh, short bio of, of, his, of him uh, in the front desk. And, um, and now uh, going uh, to a, a different case and a different story. This is not about a request of classification. Uh, this is about uh, an assessment uh, of urban impact that uh, uh, Dr. Mumbo developed for the site of the Portuguese Club of Macau, which is also uh, just uh, two blocks away. Uh, and, uh, and this was done because uh, the, the school uh, has a needs, uh, an expansion needs to grow. And uh, uh, so uh, we were, uh, I suppose a lot of us were, were waiting to see how uh, the government allowed the construction and what kind of attention or carefulness uh, was put into that planning. So by the time it came out, this is uh, some of the works of the author, Ocean Ramalho, a lot of them in Madeira, in Brazil, in Portugal, in Macau, here on the corner. And uh, um, so uh, when the, the final, the guidelines came out, it became apparent that there was uh, 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 no, absolutely no consideration for uh, a specific condition of the site, that there is this complex, a modern complex on the site. So it was done as if it was an empty uh, piece of land and then some areas uh, had to be preserved, which is not the way to uh, propose uh, uh, a development in a heritage context. So the fact that the building was not classified or not taken as a, an asset, heritage asset on the site uh, become uh, like a very serious matter because it was totally disregarded or seen as uh, tabula rasa. So uh, uh, for this uh, uh, report, uh, we actually developed three separate documents. The fish mean minimum uh, minimum fish of Tokomomo, uh, which we had already uh, elaborated previously. We just uh, updated uh, 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 the the report of the urban analysis of the PCU, which was issued by the government, which I will share with you next. And uh, uh, the, the the third document was a manifest of the importance and historical, uh, cultural and historical meaning of the building. And this, uh, this uh, basically tells the, import the, the, the importance of the building, how it is uh, a, a, an extraordinary building in, in, in many respects, and also places its importance in, in terms of architectural history of 20th century. And this uh, manifest was uh, elaborated by Professor Leonard Stoys in, in, in dialogue with us here in Macau. And the, the urban report was instead developed by us uh, uh, with based on a, a three-dimensional model that we did to study the, uh, the, the, the context and the shadows and so on, uh, uh, the solo projection. And then it was also used, uh, uh, it was also discussed with the Docomo International in that sense. So now, uh, very, very quickly, I just want to uh, track two, two or three things about the report. Here on the left, this is part of the, the report. Here on the left is the, uh, is the PCU that was issued. And on the right is the, uh, the alternative that we proposed. So we're proposing that the, 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 build, the new building doesn't grow on all, all the area, so that there is a, a, a patio uh, configuration in half of the, the sports ground. The main, uh, the main patio uh, uh, somehow has a clear definition. And then, <coughs> um, sorry. Uh, and then the difference between the left, the blue is the PCU allowance. And our proposal, which is uh, not so different, but it's a setback on, on the, from the side road and a lowering of the, the big uh, central footprint. 
so that uh, the, the, the gymnasium can retain its, its uh, urban presence. You can see that here it becomes almost like a podium. So here and the, the, the buildings still maintain their, their, their presence, their volumetric presence, and the configurations of the path is still recognizable. And separations uh, that you know are only recommendations anyway, but something that we consider very important, which is this number two. Um, lastly, uh, is uh, we found out doing this model that uh, uh, the three-dimensional three model that the, the issue of the shadows and the projection of the shadows from the new buildings was really not an issue because the new Lisboa podium and tower already the, uh, limit a lot the the solar exposition uh, to the complex of the school. So that was not an issue. The main issue was the setback that was uh, required. So this is the view in front of military club. If you if uh, allowed to build on all the sides like uh, PWD is allowing, this road will become a dead end uh, with 50 meters blocking. So which is a kind of, a, nobody wants that. And, uh, and so the setback that we're proposing, uh, we can see it on the right allows that we can see the China Plaza across and the uh, Cunha across from the Club Militar. So um, that is the, the summary of the two reports and uh, um, I, I will leave it at, uh, at this point. And thank you very much. <laughs>